All right, man, peace. So, brothers, this is going to be volume one in a new series that I'm starting called Are Biracially Mixed People Mixed Up? And this first edition will be featuring Miss Aisha Curry, the wife of the superstar basketball player with the Golden State Warriors, Mr. Steph Curry. And Aisha has been all over the news the past few weeks, first for her quote unquote controversial statements pertaining to her infatuation with attention and her latent jealousy of her own husband. Now she's trying to make even more waves by reiterating some of the sentiments that we've heard over the years from quote unquote mixed race people that they've never felt quote unquote black enough to fit in with the blacks. They've never felt quote unquote white enough to fit in with the whites. And this pretty much is an offshoot of living in this quote unquote Babylonian society that we live in where everyone just does whatever they feel like doing, not really assessing or addressing the potential backlash or the potential consequences of our actions. What do I mean by that? We know that once we decide to jump over that breach or over that fence that society has created to separate people, whether it be by quote unquote religion or race, etc., and you procreate with someone who's of a different quote unquote race, culture, or what have you, there is going to be a divide there that is created that many people do not anticipate because most people in this society move according to the lust of their flesh, the lust of their eyes not thinking about how their actions or their decisions are going to affect their children. Now, when it comes to this notion that Aisha Curry is trying to pay issuance to, this, this concept of not being able to fit in with the quote unquote blacks or with the quote unquote Caucasians, that might be more perception for her than reality because as many of us know, even so-called full-blooded black people have issues fitting in with various substrata within the so-called black community as maybe Caucasians have the same issues as well. But just within the so-called black community, there are issues with whether or not you're trying to be a quote-unquote uppity Negro or whether or not you're trying to be a quote-unquote thug or whether or not you're trying to be a quote-unquote square. But for people who are quote-unquote allegedly full-blooded blacks, if there is such a thing, and we all know that there is no such thing because black is not a race, at least those of us who understand what race actually is. Those of us who, who grasp that from that perspective. We know that growing up and maturing is about trying to find out who you are as a person as opposed to trying to fit in with others. But many people do not realize that until they come of age. Now when you mix the multiracial dynamic, that creates even more confusion because really there's nowhere to hide. When she talks about not being able to quote unquote fit in with the black side or the white side, what she's really saying is that she had nowhere to hide. Because people like to hide behind their race until they figure out who they actually are as people. So anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. All right, y'all. So Aisha Curry's back in the headlines. When the article came out recently about her life working as a mom. She went on to talk about raising her daughters and embracing her community. And had an interesting quote saying, My own community needs to embrace everyone better. Sometimes I feel like I'm too black for the white community, but I'm not black enough for my own community. Let me say this very quickly. Aisha Curry stated that her own community needs to learn how to embrace other people better. It's very clear to me that she's not quite sure still at her age, however old she is, 30, 31, she's still not quite sure who she is as a person. We already know that she's extremely insecure, which is very common amongst women. Nobody likes to say it because supposedly that makes you a misogynist or a chauvinist if you just speak the truth pertaining to the woman or the nature of the woman. But the woman is insecure throughout her life especially before the age of 45, which is normally when she starts to degrade physically. As the woman starts to degrade physically, now her maturity starts to kick in because that's a new level of survival for the woman. The woman is a survivalist. When she realizes that she's no longer going to be able to sell sex to survive, now she has to start to refer to a certain amount of life experience so that she can make better decisions because she knows that her looks are not going to get her out of bad situations anymore. Well, she was 25 years old and she couldn't pay her rent. <laughs> she can call up that guy who always wanted to give her some dick and say, yeah, let's go out tonight. By the way, do you have $400 I could borrow? And tacitly, what's behind that is I'll give you some pussy for that $400. Now she's 45 years old. She can't really do that anymore. So she has to have her shit together. That's what maturity is. Maturity is when you start to learn from the bad decisions that you've made previously in your life. And therefore, you start to make better decisions. So when she's talking about how her own community needs to accept people better, she does not feel like she really belongs in the so-called black community. 
And that's once again, that's what people have to consider before you decide to procreate with someone of another quote unquote race or culture. As I've already stated, so-called black people, they know the least about the concept of race of anyone. Because for the last however many so decades or even centuries, we've been the recipients of false propaganda and misinformation as well as disinformation from the so-called Caucasians. So now we associate our quote unquote race with a skin color. But all across the planet Earth, people align themselves by corporate designations pertaining to race like Asian or Arabic or Indian, African, black, Caucasian, white, etc. I had one of these pea brain ass wokeity wokes try to go back and forth with me yesterday. I believe he was upset by the couple of Nipsey Hussle videos that I did. <laughs> the pro blackity blacks have been all charged up about Nipsey Hussle for the last couple of months. Anyway, I think he was upset about that and he got very aggravated by the statement that I made that if you line up a Chinese man, a Japanese man, a Vietnamese man, and you tell them all that they're the same people, they're going to tell you no. He claimed that, well, they're all Asian. No, they're not all Asian because Asian is not a race. Asian is a corporate designation that was applied to those people. In the same way that when someone calls themselves black, that's not a race. Our people have no idea where they come from. So what they do is they accept the designations that have been given to them and therefore they, re they relegate themselves to a state of confusion. Aisha Curry has no idea who she is as most so-called black people, as most people period in this Babylonian society have no idea who they really are. When you speak to someone who has knowledge of themselves, they will give you their tribal lineage. Even certain Europeans will give you their tribal lineage if, if they have that level of depth to, to their ancestry. Most so-called blacks do not have that. That's why you find that our people tend to be the ones who are the most upset, the most emotional about conversations pertaining to race and about where they fit in. There are mixed, up, mixed reactions online, but I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Well, I, I think that obviously Steph and Aisha have made a decision that Aisha is going to be a public figure I agree with that, but I'm not quite sure if Steph Curry ever had the ability to, to nullify or void any statement or sentiment by Aisha in the first place. I don't think that Steph ever had that power because I do believe that she is his MK handler and she's the one who wears the pants in the family. Of course, he's given a certain amount of freedoms. He is the breadwinner. He basically is the, the representative of the family officially, but behind the scenes, she's pulling the strings. And a conversation driver. Mm. She wants to be a media personality. She just wants to matter. Before she becomes too old to still be appealing, she wants to feel like people actually care about what she has to say. And most modern day females are like that. Most modern day females just want to feel like everyone cares about what they think. And that's a catch 22, that's a double edged sword. Because that's one of the main reasons why so many females today have issues in their own household. They're more concerned about what the public thinks about them than what their husband thinks about them. Every once in a while, I have one of these modern liberal black females who try to go back and forth with me in the comments. And the first thing that I ask them is what does your husband think about what you're saying? And almost unerringly, either they will not respond to that question or they will say every once in a while, they'll say, I don't have a man. And of course you don't have a man because you're too busy on the internet trying to go back and forth with random men. And there's no disrespect. I don't give a shit about what you think. I just don't. I don't care about what you think. <laughs> Might sound harsh, but it is what it is. And if more so-called black men stop caring about what the average random female thought, I promise you it will be better for your own mental state as a so-called black man, and it will be better for their mental state as so-called black women because they will say to themselves, wow, maybe I actually have to start spending more time developing and cultivating my rapport with my man or maybe just get a man and learn how to treat one better than I do spending time on the internet going back and forth and arguing with men who are not responding to me. And so she's going to talk about things that are true to her. And obviously this is an issue in the black community. I'm sure she is going through it. I think that this is a, a sub issue in the so-called black community. This concept of mixed race people and the issue that they have fitting in, that's really a problem that they themselves have. When you look at nature, lions, they roam in prides. Tigers, they roll solitary. If you crossbreed a lion and a tiger, you make a liger. The liger fits in nowhere. The liger cannot even survive out in the wild. It has to stay in captivity. 
So it's pretty much the same in, in every species of, of quote unquote animal or creature on the earth. When you start to crossbreed too much, there's going to be confusion when it comes to where do they fit in. So you already have to know and pre-plan exactly what you want to do with your child's life before you make that commitment to procreate with someone of a quote unquote other race. It's unfortunate that we do this to ourselves, but what I just find the dynamic interesting is that to me, I think clearly Steph is comfortable with his wife wanting to be in the middle of national conversation. Well, brother, let me, <laughs> brother, let me take what you said and raise it up another notch. Not only is Steph Craig comfortable with his wife partaking in quote unquote national conversations, he does not have a say. Steph Curry has no say in what his wife decides to do, and people might be incredulous in that or at that or understanding that, but he has no say. She can do whatever the hell she wants to do as long as she does not take it too far publicly. Now, a few years down the line, they, they might end up going through some type of divorce proceeding as a part of the narrative for Steph Curry's life. But as of right now, they're still trying to build up Aisha Curry or she's trying to build herself up. And Steph Curry does not have the ability to tell her to shut it down. He just does not. And if he does, if he tries to, she'll probably have a nervous breakdown. Because when I watched that, that television show, when she appeared on the, on the Jada Pinkett Smith program on Facebook, all those women looked like they were a hop, skip, and a jump from having to go to a psychiatric facility. Every last one of them. Steph Curry's mother, his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, Jada Pinkett Smith's daughter. Uh, Seth Curry's fiance, they all look bugged out of their mind. They all look like as soon as the director yelled cut, they ran and got their antidepressant medication. Every last one of them looked like that. All the time. That's an interesting decision. That is. Um, a little good cop, bad cop. Steph has the perfect image, and Aisha's gonna be the one out there poking at society. Uh Very good assessment. All I'll say to add to that is that for now, Steph has the quote unquote good cop image. Who knows what might happen a few years from now? Uh, sometimes with good cause um, Here's what I would say Because I know where she's coming from uh, But one, let me remind everyone There is no president of the black community So there is selective perception mm -hmm. who, Agreed Who are you listening to when you say black right. community? There are some people who believe that you are just fine as you are And there are some people going to question you no matter who you are Who Aisha Curry is referring to Or what Aisha Curry is referring to Is the social media monolith of Wokeity Woke Negroes who are the last people that you should be listening to on any topic. 99.9% .9 of quote unquote pseudo Afrocentrist, wokeity woke pro blackity blacks, they're all talk, they're nothing but hot air. You'll see them run all around the internet clickety clacking about Africa this and Africa that. Ask them how many times they've taken trips to the Bahamas or to the Caribbean when they've gone on vacation. And they'll tell you, oh, I've been down there eight, nine times. Ask them how many times they've been to Africa. Oh, I've never been there. I always plan on going, but I don't plan on, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure I got to get my money right. Yeah, okay. All right. All the wokeity wokes who talk about how they're from Africa and this and that, ask them what tribe do they come from? 99% of the time, either they don't know or they'll give you some bullshit answer that they may have gotten from Ancestry.com or maybe have not gotten from anywhere. They're just making it up. Ask them, are you willing to move back to Chad or, <laughs> or wherever you claim you're from? Benin, Togo. Scarify your face and adhere to the cultural practices of the tribe that you alleged to come from. I promise you it's going to be a 100% answer, no. So why would you listen to those people on the internet? Most of them are dealing with psychological issues and spiritual issues as well. They feel the need to project a false image to the masses so that they thems can find a community to graft themselves into. A fake pseudo community on the internet. So that's who she's trying to fit in with. She's trying to fit in with the wokeity wokes. And that's a part of their family branding. I've stated this a very long time ago. After Muhammad Ali passed away in 2016, that activated the wokeity woke element in the sports world. All of a sudden, everybody became socially active and all these other things. There's nothing wrong with being socially active. That's a very good thing. But the solution for the so-called black community is for every so-called black man to take responsibility for his own life and stop looking for a celebrity to give you a handout. That's where it starts at. But just getting back to the point, Aisha Curry, Steph Curry, they have been extremely quote unquote woke for the last two years or so. And she's trying to figure out how come she's not getting that woke love back. Aisha does not understand that she's trying to she's trying to push and promote this image 
of the dutiful wife and the, and the dutiful mother. The modern day liberal black female does not want to be a wife anymore. She wants to be a single mother. She wants to be worshipped as the mother goddess archetype. So when Aisha Curry goes on the internet talking about how, how women are dressing inappropriately, even though many times Aisha Curry dresses inappropriately as well, when she talks about how much she loves her husband and how she's going to put her husband over her children, that's going to be a major, major no good to the liberal black females on the internet. They're not going to accept that. The mentality of the average liberal black female is F these niggas. We can talk about pro-black shit all day, but at the end of the day, F these niggas. So it's just based on who are you listening to. Basically, she's telling on herself she's listening to the wrong people. They're going to call you out no matter which way it goes. Yeah, and that's how... And at the end of the day, what does her husband think about her? That should be all that matters. Most people do not matter in life. They just don't. It might sound harsh. But when you come to that understanding, that's when you start to elevate as a person. Most people do not fucking matter. And that's how I look at it, too. I, I got to agree with you now. Who is she talking to? Like, who is she getting her confirmation from? Right. Like, it should be for, from yourself first. Mm. Like... And your family. And your family, but, but it's, it's, it's... And she has a large family. A supposedly very supportive family. So... That once again speaks to the issue that she has, but that's Steph's problem. It's, money don't make you happy, but it's, 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 it's frustrating to see her in such a great position and so insecure. I don't think it's frustrating. I think that it's revelatory. That's why I make these videos for you brothers out there. Stop worrying about pleasing a woman, bro. The woman has to be concerned with pleasing you. That's how she attains happiness. You as a man, if you're, if you're focused on pleasing the woman, you're never going to be happy because she's never happy. When you focus on pleasing the most high, that's when your own sense of contentment and happiness starts to emerge. And that's really all that matters. As long as you understand the order, that being the most high and his son are the head. You as the man, you're the head of the woman. If your woman does not accept that, if she does not care what you think, why are you with her? That does not mean that you're a dictator over the woman. Of course, you communicate and it has to be positive and constructive communication. I mean, that's really the only way that a relationship is going to survive if the communication is positive and constructive at the end of the day. So you guys are going to have to vibe on, you know, on a certain level. But if you're dealing with a with an extremely insecure woman, why would you ever have taken her seriously in the first place? Like, I don't I don't understand that. Like, you, you like you married to one of the best players ever. You're a beautiful woman, a great mother. Like you have everything going. No, she doesn't. She does not have the overt supremacy. She might have the supremacy behind closed doors. But she does not have more notoriety and fame than him. That's what she wanted, Steven Jackson. And she's not getting that. She's 30 years old. She's looking in the mirror and she's seeing her face get rounder and rounder. She's no longer able to really sell sex or to, to appeal to people in that way. And I also suspect that she was never able to go through her whore phase, at least not to the extent that she wanted to. That might be a regret for her as well. Many women love their children, but they also look at their children and they say, wow, I could be out having fun right now and I'm latched to them. That's somewhere in their subconscious mind. It might be deeply embedded, but it's there. So that's why she's so upset. You can give a woman the biggest house in the world, all the cars, the clothes and all that shit. They're still going to find something to complain about. I don't see how she's insecure about anything. Like, I think that that's something that she's a woman, brother. She's a woman. Being insecure goes hand in hand with being a woman. She has to look at it in the mirror because... At least for most of them. For most of them. Not every last one, but for most of them. Only about 99.99999%. <laughs> Nobody can make you feel comfortable about yourself but you. And I think for her to have all these situations, it's something that insecure she's dealing with. And it's, 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 it's triggering to outside to make it seem like it's more issue. Well, I don't think it was negative. And I, I mean, out of all of us, I'm, I have mixed children. And you, Miles yep. loves you, Stephen. Yep. And you guys see Miles and Sam. Hey, go Katina Mobley, walking around looking like a fake ass Dick Tracy. <laughs> oh boy, Katina Mobley is so funny. So at, at times, my children are like, you know, I look more like mommy, meaning their skin color, opposed to like daddy, where daddy's browner or black or whatever it is, and they don't understand at this moment. So for her to put that out there, I think that's nothing wrong with that. And when she when she does come out there, whether it's well, there's nothing wrong with that, but people once again have to realize that if you are quote unquote multiracial, you are going to have a much more difficult time trying to quote unquote fit in. That's just life. And you have to look at your parents for that. You have, you have to have an extremely strong familial background in order to 
to be a fruitful individual mentally and spiritually if you're of quote unquote mixed race, whatever that is. Because once again, color is not a race, but just for the sake of this video, those corporate designations are applied. So if you're half black, half Asian or half white, half Indian, where are you going to quote unquote fit in? You have to hope that you have strong family background on both sides of the family. Because amongst the, the regular population of people, they're not going to accept you to that same degree if you're growing up in an environment that is not viewed as being, quote unquote, multicultural. And that's just what America is. That's what the world is. And it's a part of life. Whether it's, you know, one uh, attention from DMs or what this, that, whatever. I don't really think she's just being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And in her situation, she's from Canada. She's not from America. Yeah. So when she did come over here, being American or Americanized, like Eddie Murphy said, was <laughs> right. He go get yeah with umfufu, yeah. <laughs> Eddie, go get the African woman. Go, she don't understand no English, and they keep her in the house. Like that's a joke. But seriously, when you start to become Americanized, there's a lot more things that are 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 are, 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 are um, what do you call it? Um, put in front of your face faster than whether you were in Canada. You want my yeah. wife? Yeah, because this is a toxic environment. America is a totally deculturalized environment. And that's why I tell you, brothers, about quote unquote relationships. You have to understand when you deal with the woman, bro, when you deal with one of these women, it's like getting on the bus. It's not like driving a car. When you drive a car, you're behind the wheel, you're in control. That's really what the, the concept of the wife is supposed to be. Many people might not like that, but it's just the truth. You're supposed to be in control of the vehicle. In America, relationships are like getting on a bus. You get on and you know for a fact that your stop is coming. You're going to have to get off eventually. If you're very fortunate, if you're very fortunate, you might be able to ride the bus to the last stop if you're extremely fortunate. But for the most part, <laughs> you're going to ride that bus maybe for one or two stops. And that's going to be that. My wife, is, my wife is Canadian and she talks about identifying with the same thing. I said, I'm from Compton. I did identify with the same thing too. I wasn't gangster enough. Mm -hmm. I wasn't cool enough. I wasn't hard right. enough. I was, right. Black people sometimes like, why are you trying to study something? I heard it and guess what? Get out of here. You mean <laughs> you mean so-called black people was trying to stop you from being learned and intelligent and knowledgeable? Get out of here. As I stated, you know, in my preface to most of the contents of this video, you know, my initial introduction. Growing up as a so-called black person, you are going to face a lot of those hurdles. So what Aisha Curry is referring to more was her inability to hide amongst a particular race. She could not hide amongst so-called black people because so-called blacks will look at her and wonder, are you even black? Like, what are you? And she knew that she could not hide amongst the Caucasians. So that's really what she's upset about. Now, A. Marcellus Wiley, he could be extremely erudite, learned, intelligent, but he could still hide. If he wanted to create a veneer for himself of being a quote unquote thug or what have you, or speak a certain way with a certain vernacular to fit in, he could do that while trying to obscure who he really is as a person. But we all go through that and you have to be extremely confident in who you are because there are a series of stumbling blocks that are set up in the so-called black community to make sure that our quote unquote race stays at the bottom. Predominantly the intelligence shaming tactics that are utilized by a certain contingent within the so-called black community so that they themselves do not feel irrelevant. And that's a bigger problem than whatever it is that biracial people go through and trying to be accepted amongst blacks or whites. The real issue in the so-called black community is that we do not extol intelligence enough. And guess what? I started to listen to people say, no, keep going, brother. And, and it was black people who also told me, you find the way you are. There is no... Absolutely. There's always going to be a demographic of so-called black people who try to push you to excellence as well. So that's what you have to focus on. You can't focus on the low-level Negroes. Let them do all the bottom where they're going to be at anyway. There's no limit to the expressions of any culture, especially the black culture. That's why I said there ain't no president. Right. Somebody gonna call you out no matter which way it goes. But it's good for her to speak out about it because my children, I have to explain to them every single day who the, you know, who's the hero, who's the leaders, what's this, what's that. So they have to go from the white side to the black side to the... But I also teach side. my children too that you have to love yourself first. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and you only, you only gonna be as successful as you want to be. Everything starts with you. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Right. Yeah, insecure. We all have insecurities, but every, you can deal with everything when you deal with yourself first. Absolutely. And I think that's what and she maybe she did get love from her family. Maybe, right? maybe but, she but, did. But Steve, what about that? What if she is confident 
And the way of her expressing her confidence is by showing her vulnerability. Right. And the reason why she can be so... Let me tell you what things I'm dealing with. By being transparent. By being very transparent. By oh, that's possible. It's possible that she's showing her confidence by being extremely transparent. It's also possible that she understands that there are certain hot button conversations that she can use to bring some level of, of notoriety or attention to herself and just you know, bear it out. For example, in the NBA, we have Kevin Love and DeMar DeRozan, star players in the league who have decided that they're going to be very transparent about their issues with mental health. Do I view that as a sign of confidence? No, not necessarily. I view that as a sign that they're being co-signed by the power structure of the NBA. They're being supported by the power structure of the NBA. And now they know they can say what they want without, without fear of retribution from their team or what have you. Aisha Curry is in a very secure position as a person. She knows that Steph is always going to have her back. So now she can say whatever it is that she feels like is going to get the most attention, whatever it is. If Aisha Curry had other issues that she thought were going to get more attention than, than talking about race or talking about wanting to see random dick pics in, in her phone or in her social media, she'd be talking about that. Right now, she's desperate to try, to try to squeeze that last little bit of juice out of the orange of fame that she has while she's still young. Everything else has failed. So I'm not quite sure if it's necessarily about her being a secure person. I think it's just whatever she has. It's like someone who's, you know, who has to pay their rent or pay their mortgage and they lost their job. They're going to start selling their furniture. It doesn't mean that they're good with losing their furniture. It just means that desperate times demand desperate measures. And she is desperate for attention. She's desperate for fame. Because she is, as Coutinho says, there are some kids that's like they can relate to exactly what she's saying. And right, but what is the solution exactly going to be? Let's say, for example, she's able to reach, quote unquote, biracial or multiracial children with her message or with her question. Is that going to solve the, the problem? No, it's really not. Because our people, so-called black people, once again, just within ourselves, we have cultural problems. We have cultural issues that we have to resolve. So the, you know, paying more attention to multiracial people or biracial people or quote-unquote accepting them, that's never going to happen on the scale that they would like because at the end of the day, <laughs> biracial people, they tend to be double-minded. Those are just facts. They tend to be double-minded. So so-called blacks tend to not trust them as much because they might say, well, you know what, if I do trust you, you're going to end up trying to go back to the quote-unquote white side or the quote-unquote Asian side anyway. You're going to waffle. So that's that's the condition of the battle. And want to be able to say, oh, okay, well, Steph Curry, wife Aisha deals with this exact same issue and they can relate to it and, ha and opens up a conversation. And so I I'm not so sure that she's insecure. I just think she's... I am. She's very insecure. But that's okay. She's made a calculated decision. She's going to be a public figure. That's part of it, but she's been wanted to be a public figure. But that's certainly part of it. And, a, and a, you know, I don't know if she wants to be a polarizing one, but she's going to be a polarizing public figure. But well, I'm not quite sure if she give a shit because most of the, the ratchet <laughs> hood rat chicks on the internet never liked her anyway. Because she, she has what they act like they want. Liberal females act like they want the stable household with the husband and so on, but they really don't. They want to have the ability to be fluid. They want to be able to fuck the guy at work, go to the club, fuck the guy at the club, fuck their baby daddy, so on and so forth. And then get on the internet and talk about no good niggas and what, what happened to traditional men. Like, you know, that's, the, that's the biggest laugh in the world. For you brothers who don't understand when I, when I tell you the woman is a two-dimensional thinker, what that means is that it's, that's a person who makes statements or evaluations and has no understanding of the connection between your statement and the reason behind why what you're saying is not happening. For example, if I was someone who just laid on my couch all day and then I said, what happened to the days when people had an equal chance to get a job? <laughs> How could I say that if I'm not putting my best foot forward? If you're a modern day female and you've decided that you're quote unquote equal to a man, you're going to do what you want. You're going to sleep with however many people you want. But then you reflect back and you say, what happened to traditional men? Why would you be concerned about traditional men when you're not a traditional woman? You understand? The energy that you put into a situation is going to benefit or act as a detriment to the energy that you want to get out of it. If you want positivity, you have to inject positivity. If you want, 
if subconsciously you want negativity, then you're going to inject negativity and you're going to get negativity in return. The, the, the thing that is unsettling for me, because you're you're correct in what you're saying, is that one, it, it really is an admission that others are defining you. One, even in your own community, they, like that's too far. Like I'm not raising my kids about listen to the noise. I'm raising their filters so they could drown out that right. noise. Exactly. One and two, there's not a single black person I know. If we're gonna keep this just what yep. you're saying. That went unscathed in terms of Absolutely. Anybody who's grown up in any community, probably, but especially the so called black community, you, <laughs> ain't no way in the world you're going to make it to adulthood and not have scars. But that's okay. Those are battle scars. What that means is that you survived. Of criticism towards their blackness. Like, it, success at times is getting poked at in terms of is that black enough? Affluence, like everything. You move to suburbs. Like, you can so, go too far the other way. You go yeah. too ghetto. Yeah. Too ghetto. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So right. I know you've heard that. Right, right. right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a million times. Why, why are you going to test a million times? <laughs> but, but Marcellus, I, yeah. I, I'll just, there's a process for every human being getting to the point where it's like, this is who I am. Real. Damn. Love you know, it or leave it. Simple as that. And that's really all adulthood is. Is when you get to a point in your life where you can look at another person who don't like you and say, you know exactly where you can go. You know how fast you can get there, and hopefully you have gasoline drawers on when you get there. Oh well. But that, like you said, there's a process. And that, that process, that's, that's her helping everyone else. Yeah. She's helping people. I have to disagree with that, sir. She's helping herself. I don't think that Aisha Curry is helping anyone by asking the question. You can only help someone else by having the solution. You have to have the answer to actually be a help. If all you're doing is asking the question, that you're just trying to inject yourself into a forum and make yourself the center of attention, which is consistent with her psychological profile and consistent with the psychological profile of women in general. Most women, because they're two-dimensional thinkers, do not have the answers to complex situations or complex questions. What they're able to, what they're able to do is bring forth the contention. People out there that are insecure are literally doubting themselves when these situations come up. So whether it's being the thought in the DM or whatever it is, I don't know, or, or this situation. Oh, you know. Situation, she's just voicing it because she, she's, she, has the she has the platform to do so. All right, coming up. All right, so now that's basically it on that, brothers. That was volume one of Our Biracially Mixed People Mixed Up. And this will certainly be a continuing series. So peace.